Welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. Our mission is to share what we have learned from our experience and the experience of others to help you make more money investing like a pro. We want to teach you how to create wealth by investing in real estate the Discount Property Investor way. To jumpstart your real estate investing career, visit FreeWholesaleCourse.com, the most complete free course on wholesaling real estate ever. Thanks for tuning in. All right, guys, welcome back to the Discount Property Investor Podcast. This is your host, David Dodge, with my co-host, Mr. Mike Slain. Mike, good afternoon. What's going on, Dave? How are you, buddy? I haven't had you on a podcast in a while, dude. Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good minute. Good, man. Good. Doing really good. Yeah. yeah. Good deal, man. To, it, yeah. Go ahead, please, please. I, I yield the floor to you, my, my man. I was going to introduce our guest, uh, Mr. Jeff Kaufman. Thank you so much for joining us. This is, uh, yeah, yeah you were on the show, one of our first guests, I believe. It was yeah, back, back, at, back in the day, man. It's probably been two, three years at this point. It was. It was episode 29. So, man, it's been a long time. That's right. But Jeff, is uh, he's one of our good buddies. He's one of our fellow investors. He sells us deals. I think we maybe have done some joint ventures. I don't know if we've sold him any or not. But he's also located here in St. Louis, Missouri, where we are located. And we're bringing Jeff on today because he has some very, very, very unique skill sets and talents that not only do we want to teach you guys about on this podcast, but Mike and I are interested in learning a little bit more about it as well. So today we're going to be uh, talking about sub two investing, subject to investing, as well as some other very, very similar type of owner financing and, and creative financing techniques. Welcome, Jeff. How the hell are you, my man? Good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. This is round two. I'm excited. Round two, baby. Yeah. yeah. So guys, go if you haven't listened to Jeff's podcast, go back and listen to that first one. And uh, one of the things that, that I got from the last episode, my favorite little nugget about subject to Jeff was something super, super simple. And what you said was, you never say the word subject to when you're talking to sellers. Does that change, Jeff? Or is that yeah. still the same? It's still the same for me. Uh, I, I just don't like scaring people. You know, um, really, if you think about it, those folks that you're talking to, it's not every day that you are going to approach somebody, ask them to give you the deed to their house, uh, and they just willy nilly do it. So uh, I don't like to scare people. And I feel like when you get technical and when you get, uh, you know, super into the weeds with people, it's just, it's just intimidating. So I still, to this day, I still don't do that. Yep. That's a, that's, that's a good, cool. that's good though. I mean, really it's better. I mean, you, you can easily describe the process without saying that to them. So yeah, if you can avoid it, I think that probably makes the most sense. So right. guys, this is going to, this is episode 172 and Jeff was on episode 29. I'm looking at wow. the history here. So Jeff, you are, uh, went from 29 to 172. We're going to get you back when we get up into the 200s, my man. We love having you on the show. And it's good to catch up, man. I haven't seen you around town recently. Well, and that's really what I want to know from Jeff is what's changed in your business and what's changed in the way that you approach sellers. Uh, that's a that's a great question. Yeah. Too. What's yeah? So a lot has changed in my business. Um, I actually I am you know I still do some wholesaling. Uh, it's it's a requirement, but I have um, gone back to my roots, so to speak, and I just I'm just a buyer. That's it. That's all. That's the way that I look at it. Uh, you know, I just go out, I market for properties and I'm just a buyer. And then from there, I'm a transaction engineer. That's really all it is. And, and wholesaling just happens to be uh, one of those exit strategies for me. Jeff, do you remember when we met? It was at a Mexican restaurant. You wanted yeah. to meet or, you yep. know, we wanted yep. to get together and I was with my wife. Yep. I remember that. And the reason that that even came to me, to my memory is because when we were sitting down, I don't even think you ate. I was like, dude, go have something to eat. And you're like, I just ate and I felt terrible, but we, we met. But one of the things I remember from that meeting was you saying, all we are in this business is transaction engineers. And I literally remember it like it was yesterday. And it just sparked my memory by you saying that again right now. So I love that yeah. your mindset hasn't changed at all. I mean, that's all we are, guys. We are, we are um, transaction engineers. You know, We're just trying to help somebody solve a problem. And usually the property isn't even the problem. It's there's something else that's underlying. Right. Um, yep. So I just love that. I wanted to bring that up real quick. 
Yeah, I mean, I got wrapped up in, uh, like a lot of people do, and this is probably something that, uh, you know, a lot of your, a lot of your viewers should really take to heart. Uh, I got wrapped up in, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, and I got wrapped up in uh, doing things that, um, you know, took me off, took me out of focus, took, you know, I started doing things that just weren't in my wheelhouse. And I have, uh, I have learned over the years that uh, focus, sticking and staying focused is just absolutely paramount. I mean, it's the most important thing that you can do um, in my, in my opinion, in this business. Man, focus is power. Like, yeah. Shiny object syndrome is the killer of, mm -hmm. of, of goals. It is the killer of goals. You, you gotta, yeah. you gotta set those goals. You have to and then create a plan, right? I, I love the saying, um, a goal without a plan is a dream because that's exactly right. what it is, right? So figure right. out what your goals are and put together a plan and then focus on that plan. And that's it. That's how you get be it successful or become successful at anything, not just real estate. Yeah, so focus is power. Wouldn't you agree, yeah. Mike? I mean, it's... Yeah, it's, I mean, again, we get... We it's, gotta, chase, it's, it's gotta be that way. We chase a lot of shiny objects, so can definitely relate to that. Uh, Jeff, I mean, there's there's no question about it. It's very very hard, I think, for most entrepreneurs to stay laser focused. So you got distracted, but uh, you want to stay focused on your roots of uh, of of being a buyer, right? That's kind of what you're trying to say. Right, right, yeah. And uh, primarily, and uh, you know, kind of a side, not an aside, but um, my my <clears throat> my preferred acquisition strategy is creative financing, and when I first got into the business, you know, the first three houses that I bought uh, were all done sub two. This is back when I had absolutely no idea what the heck I was doing. I mean, no, I mean, I literally uh, was trying to find, I was trying to find title companies that could help me out. And um, what ended up happening was I ended up developing a process for myself or the beginnings of a process for myself on how I, on how I was to do these in the future. And, um, I've just built on that and built on that over the years. And uh, it's all culminated kind of in uh, this big, huge library that I have now of, of all of these processes and systems that I've built. And um, that's kind of what I'm uh, gonna, gonna be putting out to the world here uh, very soon. Okay, so, cool. Do you yeah. have a course or anything? Or any, uh, I know I've seen some, some, some Facebook ads recently. Um, what are you working on right now? Right now, uh, I am building out, I actually have, I call it my legacy course. It was called Subject to Investing for Newbies. And um, it's still available. I don't push it at all just because I am currently, what, you know, what I found out through building that course was there's a lot to take in. I mean, there is a ton to take in when it comes to sub two. It's so new to a lot of people. Uh, so what I decided to do was I decided to break those out into uh, individual little mini courses. And uh, another problem that I was having was the people I've got, I don't know, 40 something students in that course. And the problem that I was having is that um, they would have to go search through that course and find exactly what it is that they were looking for with the mini courses. I find they can just go directly to that course. It's very, very um, subject specific. And so uh, all they do is they go into that in that little mini course and there it is. It's a, it's a really, really simple, uh, much simpler process for students so oh yeah guys if you want to check the course out go to dpipodcast.com forward slash sub two sub number two sub two dpipodcast.com forward slash sub two you can get more information about jeff's course um, or many courses and the link to that course right there jeff let's talk about what you're working on these days here in town you said that you know you're a buyer you're looking to solve problems However, your preferred method of uh, purchasing is the creative finance. So what does that look like? How does that work? Well, you said, uh, it's funny you mentioned, you said here in town, I, I focused in on those keywords. I've actually, uh, I've actually, I have a JV program that I, that I developed. Um, I call it my collective joint venture partner program. And so right now I'm actually not working in town. <laughs> right now I'm um, closing a deal out in uh, Lahui, Hawaii. I've got one working. Hawaii? In, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I've That's got one up. working. I've been working in North Carolina and I've got one working in, um, in Washington right now. So uh, I've kind of, I've kind of branched out. It's, it's, 
really strange how it happened. Um, I just kind of had started, I started having people contact me. Uh, I guess when you, you have very specific knowledge, um, people seek you out. I don't know. I guess that's, I guess that's what's going on, but I'm not complaining about it. Uh, it did help me uh, to develop this, this whole joint venture partner program. So, um, as far as in town goes, I still have a few, um, a few properties. We are actually uh, selling those off. So, uh, my exit strategy on all these has totally changed. Uh, I decided, I know you guys are, are big into rentals, but I have decided that I can't stand being a landlord. I hate it. Hey, and that's okay, guys. I mean, some people have it in them. Some people don't. That's right. I don't have it in me either. Mm -hmm. However, I have a property manager that does it all. So right. I like the property side of the business. I like the finance side of the business. I like working with Mike and my other guy, and our other partner, Bill. So there's a lot of advantages, obviously, to it. But I can't stand dealing with the people. So right. personally, if I didn't have a good property manager, um, I wouldn't be in the I business. Wouldn't, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't do <laughs> landlording personally myself. Right. I learned very, very quickly. I'm the same way. Yeah, I cannot I, do property management but I can do the taxes and the numbers and sure. the rehabbing. So. Yeah, and I'm happy to go out and, and look and all that stuff, right? We're, and, we're in agreement with you on that yeah, one. Yeah, we're in agreement with that one. Yeah. So, oh, so tell yeah. us what the, what the life cycle then is of your deal. So you get a property, you're buying it with creative financing. We often refer to it as subject to, because I think that's more often than not what you're buying with, right? Is the, 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah. I like to get the deed. Yeah, perfect. You get yeah. the deed, but uh, the mortgage stays in someone else's name or some other entity's name, correct? Right, you got it, you yeah. got it. Yeah. So, so what's, what's the life cycle? Walk me through that or walk us through that. Wow. Uh, okay. So um, I actually have a, a really good slide on this. I'm, I'm not going to bring it up here, but uh, it's essentially, you know, starting from the beginning, it's, it's actually, I'm going to kind of weave a little story here, but really it's a matter of, you know, getting in front of the right people first. We all know that we all know we have to have the right motivations, especially uh, I think if you're going to be doing something creative, um, so it's getting in front of the, the right people first. Um, it's, it's kind of the way that I explain it is with subject two, if I'm going to pick up something creatively, I am not necessarily looking to close anybody. So for me, if I can get in front of the right person and that's either through the list that I build uh, or it's going to be, you know, I don't know what you guys are. I think you guys are doing a lot of cold calling now if I'm not mistaken, but getting in front of the right people uh, with the list that I build, uh, going out and meeting with them and trying, trying my, trying my best to uh, not force the issue, but, but really make them a part of my team and have them actively participate in the deal with me, get that property under contract, uh, pick it up subject to, and I actually do all my own closings. I've, I found that, you know, the biggest problem that I have in this business is finding people, uh, mainly the professionals that we're, that we're looking for, you know, the attorneys, insurance companies, all that, all that stuff like that, um, are all of those people that's become the huge, the, the, the biggest single issue that I've had. So I just decided to learn and teach myself how to do this. And so, uh, from beginning to end, it's, it's basically on my shoulders. Uh, that is my path and that's what I've chosen to do. I hope that answers your question. I kind of, there's so much to talk about in that, in that, you know, in that question that uh, it's very hard to narrow down one thing for me. So, sure. well, so, so t just walk us through one deal. Maybe I think that might be a little bit easier. Like uh, your most recent deal that you've sold off. Could you kind of describe that one? Sure. Like the, what, what happened in that one, the ins, the outs. If you have, if you have one, again, if you don't remember the numbers, that's okay. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I've got, a, this is a perfect one. I've got a, um, let's talk about the one in Hawaii that's going on right now. Oh yeah. Excellent. I love it. Um, so I got contacted by a, uh, by a wholesaler here in St. Louis who contracted on a house in Hawaii. And, who was it? Uh, Drop his name, bro. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tyler, Mr. Tyler Carey. Mr. Okay. Tyler Carey. Yeah. Uh, but Tyler contacted me. He knew that I was into uh, sub two stuff. So essentially Tyler contracted a property out there in uh, Hawaii. He's working with, he, he has some, 
some magic that he's doing. I, something that I've never really heard of, to be honest with you. He's a pretty sharp guy. Uh, but he brought me this deal. And um, essentially, uh, this is going to be a retail flip. So he contracted this deal. He has uh, hired me as uh, using my services to actually walk them through this deal. And um, so they've got this property under contract. We're working with a buyer. He already has a buyer in place. And the numbers on this one um, look pretty good. This is about a, there's about a hundred grand in equity on the table here. And so we were able to secure this property uh, with $35,000 cash and then take over the mortgage on it. Uh, the mortgage is right around, uh, I think 230, something like that. So, and this is a little apartment. This is a tiny little apartment in Hawaii and it's almost $400,000. So it's, it's, it's value is almost $400,000. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to buy that property in a trust. And then we are simply going to assign beneficial interest of that trust to the new buyer. Uh, the new buyer being uh, Tyler's buyer. Okay. So, Hey, we got to take it. We got to take a pause for a quick second, right? Sure. So guys, if you don't, if you're not familiar with sub two investing or what subject two is, go listen to episode 29 where we interview Jeff about what that is. So Jeff, if people are listening right now, I don't want to, I don't want confused listeners because that's just not the point, right? So let's just take a quick, maybe two minutes or less and define sub two, if you don't mind, because you bought sure. this sub two, right? Say again? You bought this sub two. I, I'm a JV partner on this one. Got it. Right. But right. you're, you're, but, but you know, essentially what, what I want to explain though, is they have, there's a mortgage on this property for 300 grand. It's worth 400 grand. They only right. had to bring 35 to the table. How, like, if you don't understand sub two, that makes, that doesn't right. make sense. Right. You know what? I'm, How does that I'm, work? I'm really, really bad at that. No, I, no, I, it's I'm, okay. And I'm glad that it's okay. That's fine. Let's just explain that real quick. And okay. Then we can, so we can keep going. with this deal, there is a, there's a mortgage on this property for 230 and some change. Now, the um, Tyler, who is, who is the wholesaler on this, is, has got that property under contract. And he's got it under contract subject to. And what that means, all that, all that really means is that he's going to buy this property. He's going to pay the, the seller uh, a set amount of money. Now, you don't have to pay anything. It just all depends on what you negotiate. But he's agreed to cash this seller out at $35,000. So the seller is going to get a $35,000 um, cash payment. Okay, so guys, just real quick, what that means though is that they're willing to pay the seller 35 grand cash direct. It has nothing to do with the mortgage itself. So really Jeff's buying this for 230 and change plus 35, and I should say Jeff and Tyler. You got it, cool. you got it, right. So what's gonna happen is the owner of that property the current seller is going to deed that property into a trust. Now you can use an LLC, you can use whatever you choose. Uh, we chose to use a trust on this one. Um, but that mortgage that's, that's already, that's in place right now, that's being, that's, that the payments are being made on right now, that mortgage is going to stay there. And then uh, it's going to be our responsibility to make the payments on that mortgage in place of this, in place of the old, the previous owner. Once we close, he will he will become the previous owner. We're going to get legal title to that property, and that mortgage is going to stay in place. Okay, cool. So, guys, understand this real quick. The property, the the the, the mortgage on the property is two hundred and thirty and change, and the seller had agreed to sell the property but keep the existing financing in place for Jeff and Tyler, uh, but he wanted thirty five grand. So, you know, typically you would need 230 plus 35, that's 265, call it 270 grand to purchase this property. Jeff is the king of creative deals here. And obviously he's got a partner on this one that he's joint venturing with. Again, gets creative, love that. And they're saying, hey, seller, um, we'll buy it. Um, we don't really have intentions of keeping this long-term, right? Maybe three, four, five months most, right? So you're also, when you're pitching him on this, you're not having to say, hey, we're going to keep this financing in place and we're just going to rent this thing out for 10 years. 
you know, best of luck on your credit or whatever, like on trying to get a new house. That isn't the goal here, right? Instead, it's, hey, keep this in place. It makes no sense for us to go get a loan, pay off your mortgage company that just adds cost on everybody. Only person that wins here is the bank. Uh, let's just keep it in place, but we're going to give you that 35 grand on top. So his purchase price is, you know, his, the debt that's owed is still, it's still going to be 265, 270, but the out of pocket's only 35. So the existing mortgage that's there stays in place, right? And the way that they are structuring this, and Jeff, feel free to interrupt anytime, is they are transferring the property from the individual's name into a trust, which is completely legal and normal. And it happens every day. Thousands yep. of times, I'm sure, across the country. Yep. Probably happening as we speak. As we speak, right. And then what's happening is instead of the owner owning the trust, that's what gets sold. It's the ownership of the trust. Therefore, you can keep the owner's financing or the, the, the current owner, which will become the previous owner, you can keep that financing in place, yet the deed actually can transfer to the new owners because Jeff and Tyler will be the owners of the trust. Am I saying that right? Sort of the the trust, you know, we can get we can get down a rabbit hole with with uh, with entity structure, but in, essentially, <laughs> <laughs> essentially the trust uh, the trust is the owner of the property. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, and the trust. And you guys is, have the controlling interest in the trust at that. Correct. Point. Yeah. So the yeah. trustee is actually the one that takes title inside a trust. Love it. The okay. Beneficiaries are the um, are they realize all the financial benefits and gains and losses and things like that. So. Cool. But yeah, you you've essentially got it. Cool, Jeff, thanks for just taking that quick break. Because again, if people don't know, that kind of explains what this is and how we're doing. Again, go listen to episode 29 with Jeff. It's uh, about an hour long. And yep. uh, we talk about it in great detail. So that'd be a great place to start. But now that we're back, so you guys got the trust set up, where, where, where do you go from here? Got the trust set up. We've already found an end buyer. So um, essentially, this is, this, is like a whole, this is a wholesale deal. That's what this is. Um, and there are definitely, there's definitely some danger in wholesaling subject to properties. I will tell you that, uh, they need, it needs to be done correctly. Um, uh, but it can be done. It can totally be done. Uh, it's done many times a day all over the country. Um, so essentially we've got a buyer. Now we're going to take our beneficial interests in that trust. We are the beneficiaries of that trust. We're going to take our beneficial interest and we're going to sell our beneficial interests for a fee. And that is our wholesale fee. That's how we're getting paid on this deal. So what, if you don't mind me asking, what's the deal look like in the end or what's the projections? It sounds like you guys have a buyer, but it hasn't closed quite yet. So, um, and this is in Hawaii guys, Jeff, you live in St. Louis still, right? That's right. I, I don't even think I know Tyler. I think I heard of him. Does he live here too? He does. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's local here. So uh, really, I guess before yeah. we even talk about that, how the hell did you guys find this deal? Or how did Tyler find it? I, you know what? He explained this to me. <laughs> He's working with uh, uh, some, some lenders somewhere that uh, I guess they've got some notes. I could be, I could be totally wrong here. Sure. Yeah. I guess they've got some curious. notes that are not performing. So it's basically he got a lead from networking. That's what yeah. matters. That's just curious yeah. where the lead came from. So yeah. networking, yeah. guys. The more you're yeah. in this business, the more leads you're going to get from networking. I did a podcast on this two days ago. Literally, hey, when I first started, I had 0% referrals. And now that Mike and I are five, six years in, you know, 30, 40% of our business is from referrals. So I love that. Love that. Yeah. Brother, you cannot have a greater lead source than referrals. I don't care who you are. It's the free lead source. Yeah. N not just free. They're just the best. I mean, they're, you know, these people that you're talking to, they know exactly what you do. Exactly. So, and they're not looking for everyone else to come give them bids either. It's like, oh, you right. can help. Great, yeah. come over. Yep. Love I've it. run my business for almost two years off of off of leads at about seventy five percent. About seventy five percent of every dollar that I've made over the last two years has come from referrals. That is Isn't that no, awesome. No that's, that's amazing. Yep. yep. Hell yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, so I get off on tangents. I apologize. So back sure. to uh, the projections. Uh, <clears throat> well, the the. The end, the end game here is we already know that our buyer is going to flip this to retail. Um, don't ask me why, because I'm the JV partner here. I don't know why we didn't just take this down and then us flip it to retail. But uh, that being said, um, you guys are wholesaling it to a wholesaler. Yeah. 
yeah. essentially, give or take. Yeah. Well, you got to keep in mind, I'm I'm the uh, I'm I'm a JV partner, so I don't yeah. actually have controlling interest in this in this property. It's, so it's what? You got some of the profit coming your way. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get paid. Uh, we'll get paid off of that. Uh, essentially, I'm I'm really getting paid for my services, or I'm actually just being paid for uh, knowing how to do this. To be honest with you, that's that's really that's really it. You're uh, a coach. You're coaching. Yeah. Coaching joint venture coach. I love it. Uh, the, the back end profit for our, uh, for our retail seller. Now he's going to have uh, some things he's got to, you know, he's, he's not totally in the clear here. There's going to be some things that have to be done to this property that I personally am not willing to do. I'm not willing to hire a contractor and trust a contractor in Hawaii to do the things that, that need to be done to this house in order to get it retail ready or this apartment rather. That's so, six time zones away from here, by the yeah, way. Yeah. So, that's just so, a quarter two. That's six. Yeah. <laughs> that's about a quarter of the way around the world, guys. But once it's all said and done, and um, and this guy does get this house in retail ready condition, uh, he's going to turn and flip that house or that apartment, rather. I keep calling it a house. He's going to flip that apartment. There's potentially eighty to a hundred grand on the table for him. So nice. So you guys are leaving meat on the bone for him, yep. which is awesome. You guys are buying it with creative financing subject to an existing mortgage via a trust. You're wholesaling it to another investor. There's still room on meat on the bone. Uh, he's going to rehab that property, list it. And uh, is he, is he going to rehab it or is he going to wholesale it? I think he's going, he's going to do some uh, paint and carpet type stuff. I'm not a hundred percent. He's wholesale if he's buying it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm I can still fuzzy on too. So what's the order of operations here? So what's happening first? Are you guys taking it down or are you doing yeah, a 35 K are you, I understand, but are you doing a true wholesale to where you're having the, your buyer buy it? Double close type of Double thing. close. Like, are you bringing the 35 K to the table or are you having your buyer bring the 35 The buyer. K? That's the good, that's Perfect. why we chose a trust. Man, you left out the, the best yeah, part, yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why we chose a trust because we can sell our beneficial interest in that trust for, you know, once we have it, once we have the trust built, the trust doesn't have to, you know, you don't have to go out and get new title work done. You don't have to get, a, you know, another title policy. Um, once the trust is in place and that property is transferred into trust, all you're doing at that point is selling your beneficial interest in the trust. So that's where that 35K is coming in. We're going to sell our beneficial interest. And now he, own, now he has, our buyer has 100% beneficial interest in that trust. Yeah. So you're doing this all at the same time though, right? Correct. So you're basically you assigning the, the end buyers doing it you're closing on it or rather putting it in trust at the same time. So the, the seller who is the current mortgage holder, he's getting his 35 grand. Uh, you're getting whatever with the agreements is. of staying in, staying with having the loan in his name for a few months. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And right. Then your end buyer is fully aware that he has to make those mortgage payments and all that stuff. So how much do you stay involved in this then? Uh, no, oh, wow. that, that gets complicated when the very, buyer is now willing the, to buy sub two and he's holding. Wow. Right. Oh, so now okay. it does. It Woo! does. And this is why, this is why I talked about the danger in, in wholesaling subject two deals. Um, you know, I give, uh, I give a class on this and it's definitely one of the areas that uh, probably gets the most, um, gets the most questions asked in. And um, I, I recommend that people don't actually wholesale subject two deals unless they are willing to stay in that deal in some manner at some capacity, because ultimately you have made the promise to make that payment for that seller. You've made the promise to the seller. And uh, I, you know, integrity is a, a really, really huge thing for me. And if for some reason, and this is actually why we chose the trust as well, if for some reason your buyer cannot make that payment, you've got to jump in and make that payment. Uh, so, so what ends up happening is in a, in the trust situation, you can do this with an LLC as well, but in the situation with a trust, we remain, there's a position inside a trust called a director. Now a director would be the equivalent of a manager of an LLC. And as manager and or director, we're just going to stick with the trust. We'll just say director. If you're the director inside a trust, uh, you have the ability to pull, uh, to, um, to replace beneficiaries. To change the beneficiary without their, without their approval, essentially. 100%. 100%. Yep. So 
You basically so you're not actually the uh, um, controlling interest of an LLC. Yeah, similar. I would be the member. Yeah, so lines of like um, power of attorney, essentially, to change. Um, sort of, but this is a this is a private contract. Gotcha. It would be if I had to equate it to anything, it would be just like the manager in an LLC. Gotcha. A Makes manager sense. can replace a member of an LLC. So it would be the equivalent uh, of of that. I actually have a property here in St. Louis, down in uh, six three one two eight. Where, whereby I did is this exact same thing, but I used an LLC to do it. I'm the manager of that LLC. What I did was I, I offered a membership in my LLC to this rehabber. I remained the, the controlling member or manager rather of the LLC. I gave it to him at a discount because there wasn't a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of juice in this deal. If I were to wholesale it off, he would probably not have uh, done as well as he as he's done. Um, so essentially, I stay. I, I sell him eighty percent membership in that LLC. I remain twenty percent vested as a member, and I'm also the manager. So when he goes to sell this property, I've given it to him for very little upfront. I think it was two thousand dollars. He goes in. He's fully. You know, he goes in. He brings all the cash to rehab it. Uh, he gets it all done. He lists it. That house is actually now, uh, it's under contract right now. When that house sells, I will get my 20% membership back out of it. I'll get 20% of the net profits when that house sells. Does that's that make cool. sense? Yeah, that's yeah. a great, that's, that's a great, great way to join so, venture with somebody, you know, look, just take yeah. the back end profits and uh, it leaves more meat on the bone for, for him. And, you know, the thing about these type of deals, guys, that I think we kind of skipped over, it goes without saying, but, you know, let's say it. You know, we're creating, or Jeff in this scenario is creating multiple wins. I mean, for one, he's, he's helping a seller solve a problem. And it may or may not be the property, right? But either way, the property is going to be purchased. Um, Jeff's going to get paid. He's not doing this shit for free. Come on, let's be real. He's getting paid, right? Mm -hmm. He's teeing up with other investors. So in the Hawaii deal, it's a joint venture with another guy, and he's helping him do it. Um, but he's also helping another guy the buyer in that situation that's like a four win right there. that's a win 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 so and then the south city or the south county 63128 deal um similar situation he's helping the seller uh he partnered with the buyer on this one right so he's actually going to take a piece of the gross profits in the back end so again right. triple win that's what we always shoot for as investors not so much wholesalers as investors we got to seek motivation find those people get in front of them, tell them we can help them. And then we create as many wins as we possibly can. So before That's we right. conclude though, I really do want to go back to the Hawaii deal and back to 10, one, question, one question in that, uh, that I really do want to kind of get, get back to is Jeff, you still, you said you have to be willing to stay involved in it in some capacity. So mm -hmm. how much are you invested in this deal? I understand you're the director of that of the trust rather. So then what is your responsibility and what are you doing then? So like, how are you, how do you monitor that? Are you going to go in and monitor the mortgage payments every month or, uh, I mean, what that's do you a, tell that's actually the a great buyer? Question. I mean, how do you, how do you Yeah, no, that's a great that? question. Cause right now we've essentially learned the how to, hmm. well, so, some of it, but let's talk about the how do. Right. Well, <clears throat> one of my, uh, one of the keys here, and it's an absolute requirement before, you actually take something down subject to is to get online access uh, to a, to their bank account or to their, uh, to their lenders their mortgage. Yeah. online portal. At that point, you can set up email notifications. Um, on this one, I know it's a short term deal. So there's, there's no reason, um, there's no reason to believe or no reason for me not to go in and, and, uh, and make sure that that's done or Tyler for that you matter. Do that regardless though, no matter right. what. Right. You're going to, here's have, the thing. I mean, I guess I mean, ideally you don't have to check it, right? But worst right. case scenario, you, you're going to need access. So you might as well get it in the beginning, guys. I right. mean, I think that that is probably like one of the fundamental things that you need to understand here is everybody needs to be on the same page. Yes, you can create a win-win, but you got to have access to that account. So if they're not willing to give you information to access it via their channels, and again, I wouldn't rely on that. I really highly doubt Jeff does either. I would get paperwork filled out that gives you access to that channel via your own login. So it can't be taken away from you, right? What I do uh, on my own, you know, if it's my deal solely, 
I go in, I change the password and everything. I don't, I don't let that way. You can't get locked out. I love it. Very cool. Uh, But you very much have to be involved with your seller here. I mean, you don't just buy this uh, and then you walk away and that's it. And that's, that's really the problem that I have with assigning subject to deals is a lot of people will do that. Uh, But you're, you're, you're very much upfront with your seller. You are very, very truthful in everything you do with subject to Um, there's a lot at stake. I don't think, you know, I know there are some big names out there that are teaching people how to wholesale subject to deals. Um, but there is a lot at stake for a seller to do this. So I just prefer to be very upfront. Um, so you know, let's talk about that just real quickly. What's at stake? Why would somebody, you know, be willing to do a sub two deal and why would you approach them as, you know, as doing a sub two deal versus, um, all the, I mean, there's a hundred different options, right? That you can do to help somebody with a deal, right? So what, what makes a good motivated seller? Like what's the perfect motivated seller? I can tell you when Mike and I look at a deal, it's like has to have equity. They need convenience, right? Like, you know, as, as investors or really specifically wholesalers, you know, we trade convenience for a discount. So if they're willing to give us a discount, why would we want to go out of our way and break our backs to give them a ton of convenience? So the perfect seller for me, equity, house needs a ton of work. They don't want to fix it. They don't want to clean it. And they're willing to give us a discount, hopefully a big discount for the convenience of me dealing with all those problems. How does yours look? It's, it's so great because every, everything you list there, I am almost 180 degrees opposite of you. So that's why I ask guys. And that's okay. Yeah. Look guys, you can do deals in good markets, bad markets, up markets, down markets. This is Dr. Seuss over here, right? Right. Do these in any markets, any equity. So boom, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that's, that's crazy. He's 180% differently what he's looking for. And he's still making thousands of dollars flipping houses. Right. Crazy. (laughs) Yeah. So let's talk about equity. Um, I'm going to talk about list building here. You know, you guys go out and you build a list. One of your requirements, probably minimum is I'm going to say 30% equity. I mean, usually minimum 35. I I just pulled a list the other day and I did 50% or more. Right. So yeah, for me, uh, if, and when I talked about getting in front of the right people, that is where it starts for me. If I'm going to go out and build a list as a creative subject to investor, I can go out and build a list where I can eliminate 50% of my competition simply by, simply by not requiring that huge equity spread that everybody else needs. I would say higher than that, man, but yeah, well, at least. Yeah, I mean, it, that's, so I, my, my max equity on any list that I build is 20%. Damn. Max. So uh, I will go, I have been known actually to buy houses with negative equity in them. It just depends. I only do about 3%, 3 to 6%, just yeah. depends on the, the price point of the house, but you can totally do it. And you can still, uh, you can still really do really, really well. It's a cash flow. It's a cash flow business. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, the equity doesn't matter as much because you're looking right. for the cash flow. Correct. Now on this deal, so you're getting paid a percentage of profits on the 63138 deal, but the Hawaii deal, um, you guys, are you selling that? Now you're selling it sub two, but how are you getting paid on that one? If you don't mind me asking, is that I'm a- actually getting a flat fee. No, okay. I'm- you're getting a flat fee. That's cool. It doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, but you're getting paid though. That's, that, that's all that matters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the, um, the, your friend Tyler, is he getting a piece of the deal or is he getting a wholesale fee? He's getting a wholesale fee. He's and is getting that paid a- on, on closing of acquisition or closing on, ac- on the exit. That is paid at the, um, at the, I didn't word that very well. It's, I understand what you meant. It's, yeah. it's paid at the change of beneficial interest, of, of ownership of beneficial interest. But when it gets substituted into the new buyer's name, he'll, he'll get paid. You guys right. will still be the directors, I guess. So you have to monitor yeah. that deal. Yep. But I mean, what do you have to lose? Maybe one or two mortgage payments. And if you have to find a new buyer, you will. But right. hopefully you don't. And you get right. paid. And then he sells. He makes money. Mortgage gets paid off. Win, 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 win. Yep. Love that. Mike's Mike's quiet there. Mike's I can see the I can see the wheels churning. <laughs> no, it's great, man. It's great. He just can't get so, a word in. Well, exactly. Dave loves to talk. <laughs> so that, right. and that is one deal which is really, really cool. And you said you don't like to wholesale them that much. My question really was going back to what is your new model? You said you don't want to be a landlord. So is the model always going to be wholesaling it? Or is the model for you buying subject to 
uh, waiting till equity's paid down and then selling it off because you just don't want the long term? Or what's the what's the play here? I mean, great question. A cash flow here's, business. Here is the play. Mm -hmm. The play for me is if I'm going to buy something subject to, uh, and I don't have the equity in it to go ahead and flip it, wholesale it, or wholesale it off, or or just you know sell it out, sell my beneficial interest in it, or whatever. I'm going to hold on to that, but I'm going to start looking for a buyer immediately. And I am going to owner finance that buyer. Ooh, I am going to write. It. This is like creative financing on top of creative financing on top of creative financing. So You're acquiring it sub to either wholesale or wholesale or whatever that might be. But whenever you do that, you're typically looking, or not always, but sometimes you're looking to sell it to them on owner financing, which will allow you to charge them retail, if not retail, plus 10%. Mm -hmm. And I would right. imagine your cash flowing monthly by the so, average of it, you're going to get paid when it does sell. Um, and you probably get paid in the beginning too. So you're getting yeah. paid three or four times here. So you get a down payment. Essentially what you're doing here with this play is you are, uh, you are arbitraging interest rates. That's all that you're doing for your cash flow. So if I know that I've, you know, consumer, consumer mortgage interest rates, owner occupied interest rates are always going to be way down. You know, right now they're three and a half, three, seven, five, something like that, where uh, if it's an investor, it's going to be in the five range. But if I'm buying them with 3.5, 3.75% interest rate on them, I'm turning around and I'm going to arbitrage that and I'm going to charge my owner finance buyer seven and a half, eight and a half, nine percent interest. And that is how I'm making my cash flow. That's where the, that's where, um, and the cool thing about that is, is I get to build that. I get to, I get to base that percentage rate that my owner finance buyer pays based on how much cash flow I require on that deal. So I get to, I get to create that out of thin air. You know, I'm like the, uh, the federal reserve bank of Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, love not only it. that, I get to, like you said, I get to, um, I get, I'm going to get a down payment. I require a down payment and that number is going to depend on, you know, based on the area that you're working in. Uh, but I'm also going to sell that house for a little bit, a bump in price on the back end too, because, you know, as long as an appraisal will support that sales price, uh, I, I would go to the max of what that, of what the value of that home is on the back end. Okay. That's awesome. So you're, you're basically selling it. Um, yeah, owner finance, or you're selling it, I guess, basically, uh, um, what's that called? Like a lease option too? So basically, you're, yeah. you you want to owner yeah. finance and then get them to refinance out or right. option out of it in a year or two then. That's what it sounds well, like. Well, lease option would be something separate from this. I'm actually offering, you know, I'm actually offering owner financing on this. So I'm going to have to send them a 1098 at the end of the year. Uh, they get the tax write-off. Uh, that's one of the trade-offs with owner financing is I don't actually get the, uh, the tax benefits. Yeah. Uh, they get that because of the interest that they're paying me. Um, I no longer get to depreciate the, the property. I don't get the 27 and a half years. Um, and hundred percent, I'm okay with all that. I'm okay with it because I just don't like being a landlord. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the trade-off. Uh, you can absolutely lease option these. You can still take that depreciation. Uh, you can take all the tax benefits, all of that good stuff. Uh, my problem with lease option, and I have lease option properties right now, is that I'm technically, I'm still a landlord. And so, and then there's, uh, there comes an issue where you talk about, um, where we start talking about equitable interest and equitable title, uh, things that I just would rather avoid. Just go straight owner finance, be done with it, and and that's it. Awesome. Yeah. Owner five. You know what? I've been wanting to break into the owner finance game. Uh, Mitch Steven is a good buddy of mine. He took me hunting on his ranch down in uh, San Antonio. This guy is a beast with owner financing and he leases, you, you know, do you know Mitch Jeff or her? I don't know him. I've heard of him. I don't know. Him. Uh, I'll have to connect you with him. He's the coolest okay. guy ever. Such a nice guy. Uh, but anyway, he, he's got, he's got 21 or $22 million lent to him. And he pays those investors, you know, 6%, 7%, 8%, depending on the term in mm -hmm. which they lend it to him. If they lend it to him for longer, he'll pay him more, but otherwise it's like six, 7%. And then he turns around and he buys the properties with those, with that money. 
and then he sells the property owner financing on 30 year notes, but the yep. interest rates like 10, 11, 12%, hundred percent arbitrage in yep. the funds. And he is just crushing it. But the cool thing about the owner finance, and as you know, is you're not the landlord as the lease option you are right. Yep. The owner finance, you're the bank. So if the air, if the air conditioner goes out, I mean, it depends how the lease options written to, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you could deal, have it set to where, you know, all of the major stuff is on them, but if they don't fix it, guess who really owns the house still you do. Right. Yep. But yeah, with, that's what uh, I've, with the owner that's financing, they own it. So it's yeah. like if, 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 the, if a tree falls on the house, Hey, you got insurance. Don't call me. Right. Unless you want me to foreclose. You right. know, like that's the only reason you should be calling me. Right. So love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. It's a, uh, uh, it's just a headache way free of cash flowing. And like I said, there's trade-offs to it for sure. Um, but cash flow is cash flow, man. That's the way I look at it. Love it guys. Jeff Kaufman is the man when it comes to, to subject to creative financing, owner financing, lease options, you name it. This guy has all the tricks up his sleeve. I love communicating, networking, chatting with Jeff. He is the man. Go check out um, all things Jeff Kaufman at dpipodcast.com forward slash sub two, S-U-B number two. Uh, Jeff, send me all your stuff so we can get that on the site. This won't publish for about a week and a half, two weeks. So we got a little time, but yeah, send me all that stuff over. And then obviously, you know, go check out Jeff on social media. Jeff, how could somebody reach out to you or uh, find you on social media? What's your favorite platform and what's the handle stuff? I'm still, I'm still a Facebook guy. Uh, I'm trying to get into Instagram, but I, you know, something about Instagram just doesn't ring right with me. <laughs> but yes. no, Facebook, uh, yes. check out uh, our page, Sub2 Empire on Facebook. Uh, we have a group. And it's a uh, subject to real estate investing mastery on Facebook. Uh, go check those out. We have a YouTube channel. It's uh, just look up. We actually, so, so sub two empire actually runs under, um, we have a learning platform called Hey Investor that we've developed. Yeah. And so sub two empire is a, um, is a, is a course of, of Hey, Inve from Hey Investor. So, uh, so you can pick out links. And then we'll, we'll get those into the, uh, into the portal here, guys, just to simplify, we're not sending you 10 to 20 different links here, dpipodcast.com forward slash sub two. And we'll have all of Jeff's information right there for you at your disposal. Jeff is one of the nicest people I've ever met. And I'm not just saying that cause he's on the show, like truly has a heart of gold. Uh, Jeff, when I met him, had a full-time job. And since then he's quit his job and, uh, it's just absolutely crushing it. I see the deals that he's doing around town. This guy knows his shit. So I would highly recommend if you're looking to learn more about sub two or creative financing, check out some of the products and the, in the courses and the coaching that Jeff has to offer. Anything you want to add to that, Mike? No, thanks for listening. Jeff, Jeff anything you want to Thank add you. to, uh, or, you know, on the, on an exit note, any, anything you want to add? Um, I, I guess, let, let me, let me say this. Let me ask you a question that, that would probably be a little bit more beneficial to the listeners and the audience here. If you are new to real estate investing, right? What's the first thing that you would recommend to the listeners and the audience to do to, to, to start being an investor, right? What, what's the first thing that you'd recommend? Well, I will tell you that um, without question, every single successful investor and business owner that I know has had a mentor. If you, if you can find a, a good mentor, um, I mean, you've got a couple of them sitting, sitting right there on, on, on screen. Um, you guys are excellent wholesalers. You're excellent mentors. Uh, I do creative financing. So um, I would be one in that arena. But I mean, if you can find a good mentor, whether it's you guys or me or, or, neither, or none of us, just go out and find a good mentor. Find somebody that you can trust, somebody that puts your interests above their own and is going to uh, you know, take you under their wing and show you the ropes. I love it. Awesome. Jeff, thanks for coming on the show again. Guys, once again, we did a show with Jeff, episode 29. Go back and listen to that one as well. Tons of uh, more, a lot more information in that episode about the how, how this is all structured and what it looks like today. We did some of, some of the case studies on, you know, what's Jeff's working on. But again, he is the man. Last but not least, head on over to dpipodcast.com forward slash sub two. And um, also leave us a comment over on DPI podcast as well on this episode. And let us know what you thought of the episode. We love communicating with you guys on the podcast site. 
Um, until next time, guys, signing off. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. <laughs>